Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey. As you know, the SSOR has tons of awesome tools and assets to help you in every way imaginable. There's so much awesome stuff that it's impossible to keep track of it all. So here let's look at about 20 assets that can help you massively speed up development of your game and get something playable super quickly, or just help you polish whatever you already have. I organized all these assets into six distinct categories to help you in different ways. I chose to highlight so many assets because there's lots of super useful ones, but whether or not they are useful will depend on what kind of game and what genre you're making. So regardless of the genre, I'm sure that several of these 20 that I'm going to highlight can be a great help to you in speeding up development of your game and helping finish whatever project you're currently working on. Also, this video is sponsored by Unity. Okay, so let's see how the SSOR can help you speed up development. I organized all of these assets into six discrete categories. There's timestamps in the video and all of the assets are linked in the description. Quick mention, Unity right now is having a sale and a bunch of the assets mentioned in this video are on sale until next week. Then when this one ends, there's another sale with even more assets discounted. And in the last week, the best of both sales will again get a discount. So check the links below and if it's not on sale, check again next week. And make sure you use the coupon to get a bonus discount up to 15% more. Let's begin just briefly with the simplest, most obvious category, which are visual assets. These are 3D models, textures, animations, effects, UI elements, skyboxes, and possibly even custom shaders. For me, as someone who has pretty much no artistic skill, for me this is one of the main ways that I use the store. So in my case, it's more due to a lack of skills rather than wanting to speed up development, but even if you are a talented 3D modeler or animator, it can still save you a ton of time to just buy something instead of building everything from scratch. If you're a regular on the channel, then you've certainly noticed how I use lots of different asset packs to make the videos look interesting. I'm a huge fan of the Cynthia Low Poly style, it's what I normally use in my videos. If you prefer something more realistic, then a great publisher is Infinity PVR. They've got great models, super high fidelity, really high quality. For some animations, you can find pretty much anything you can think of. You have some regular medieval sword swinging animations, or some rifle and pistol animations. You can even find some more exotic things, like parkour animations, zombie animations, even some gun kata animations. Another visual thing is simply textures. If you just search for it, you'll find just about everything, some in a realistic style, others very cartoony. Effects is another super simple way to really speed up development. Just add a gorgeous explosion to your game and it will instantly look much better. You can find UI elements. There's also skyboxes. You'd be surprised at how big of a difference it makes to just swap out the default skybox. And also tons of shaders, especially useful if you want to make your game look kind of cell shaded but you're not a shader programmer, just pick up one of these. And now really visuals but in a similar category are sounds. There's lots of sound effects and music on store. So that's the first category. For me as a programmer with no artistic skill, this is the main way that I use the store. But even if you do have those artistic skills, it can be super helpful to just buy something and massively speed up your development. For the next category that can really help you make your game faster are some complete game builder tools. There's tons of these for pretty much all genres you can think of, and pretty much all of these have excellent documentation to help you learn how the tool works. Usually these are pretty massive tools that have tons of systems and some really easy ways to implement all of the features of that particular genre. For example, here is the RPG Builder. It's one of the highest rated assets on the store. It even won a Unity award. This one lets you easily make a full-fledged RPG. It features a quest system, a combo system. You can easily define factions, action abilities, enemy and NPC AI. You can make some talent trees, stats, and tons more. Or perhaps you want to make a top-down game. For that, you have the top-down engine. Supports both 2D and 3D, really solid character controller, includes an inventory system, super easy level creation with moving platforms, you can add some loot systems, some keys and doors. On top of that, it's also multiplayer ready. Maybe you want to make a colony survival game, so here is a colony simulator. Features building and resource crafting, you can select colonists and automate their actions. It has an inventory system, equipment and weapons, individual stats, tech tree, day night cycle and many more. Or perhaps you prefer making an RTS, if so then check out the RTS engine. Easily handle tons of units on custom made maps, you can give them commands, it handles combat, you can easily construct buildings, get resources and make more units. For making platformers you have the Corgi engine, works in both 2D and 2.5D. It's got a super tight controller that feels great to play. It's packed with over 50 demo levels, includes camera and parallax, dialogue engine and inventory. You can easily build levels with some gravity zones, a bunch of jumpers, cannons, you can add destructible crates, wind, leathers, and tons more. Or maybe you want to make a visual novel, so for that here you have Nanny Novel. It's designed for script writers, it lets you focus on writing stories and not writing code. Features a text printer, you can skip, you can add character voicing, transitions, conditional story flow, and tons more. 
then there's even a bunch more assets for all kinds of genres. So as you can see, the Assessor has lots of massive game builder tools to really help you quickly build a game in whatever genre you can think of. For the next category, it's something that pretty much most games need. You need controllers for controlling whatever object you want, like the player, a car, perhaps in third or first person and so on. Building your own controller is extremely time consuming. It's simple to get something basic working, but making something proper that can handle every scenario in your game, making that is really complex. So these controller assets can definitely save you a ton of time. You have general controllers, like the excellent free Unity Official Star Assets. There's one in first person and one in third person. For something more advanced, you have this highly capable kinematic character controller. Easily handles all of the terrain that you can throw at it. You can go over slopes, you can jump, you can push physics objects around, get on moving platforms, walk on uneven terrain and much more. It's even made with networking in mind for easy multiplayer. For making a third person shooter, here's an excellent highly rated controller. This one is extremely modular and has tons of integrations and add-ons, so it's almost kind of like a game builder tool rather than just a controller, but still it's a very solid character controller for third person shooter games. For first person shooters, here's a great one. You can quickly get an FPS character up and running with a flexible accuracy and recoil system. It features lots of scope types depending on your needs. You can add some laser pointers and flashlights. It also supports guided projectiles with various targeting systems. And it even has parkour support with some wall running, crouch slides, and mentally. If you're making a car game, then this car controller can save you tons of time. It's very highly rated with tons of demo scenes. Features user-friendly editor scripts with tons of parameters for you to customize. And also many pre-built prefabs, so you just drag and drop and it just works. Or perhaps you're working on a space game, so for that here is the sci-fi ship controller. You can easily create spaceships, you can create aeroplanes, hovercrafts, and tons more. So basically anything that can fly. It's all physics driven, comes with a wide range of options for ship flight mechanics. You can add all kinds of flight assists, aerodynamics, damage models, and lots more. So like I said, just about any game needs a controller, and picking up one of these will save you a massive amount of time. The next category is world building tools. These are all kinds of tools that can really help you build massive worlds super quickly. You have tools to help out with world generation, others to help you place down some objects and populate your world. One of the biggest ones for this is Gaia. This one has been in active development for literally years. It has over a thousand five-star reviews. Really, it's a massive tool for all of your world building needs. You can easily generate worlds that look really awesome. You can make them fully procedural or artist driven. Includes tools for terraforming, placing down trees, defining biomes, and much more. This can really help you make some gorgeous massive worlds in hours or days instead of taking weeks or months. If you prefer something more simple, here is yet another prefab painter. That's literally the name. It does exactly what you expect. You define some prefabs and easily paint and place them in your scenes. It includes physics support, so you can just drop some objects and place them really naturally. Perhaps your game is city-based, so here is a fantastic city generator. Easily generates some massive, really convincing, realistic cities. Automatically places down some buildings, roads, trees. It can place down sidewalks, crosswalks, and just about everything that a city requires. Contains over 300 unique buildings and even has a full-fledged traffic system. Or maybe your game design requires caves and overhangs, so here's a great tool for that. You can take your terrain and easily dig some holes in it. It's very easy to use, you just click and dig. It's super fast and best of all, this works in real time. So you can let your players customize their world and as the terrain is modified, it also updates the nav mesh so both your players and the AI can navigate these new caves. These world building tools can definitely help you save a ton of time, possibly in the order of months. So if you want to build and populate a game world, definitely look into one of these instead of manually placing down game objects. Next up, we have the category for systems and tools. This one is a pretty broad category. There's tons of tools that do so many things that can save you a monumental amount of time. Let's start with the obvious one, the Odin Inspector. I made a full review video on this one, including a quick getting started tutorial. It's a really awesome tool for building tools. So depending on how you use it, this one can definitely save you hundreds or thousands of hours. Then pretty much every game is going to need some kind of save system. So something like Easy Save can save you many hours from trying to build it yourself. You can serialize and save just about any data. You can save it on a file or save it on the cloud. It enables compression, encryption, and you can do just about anything related to saving and loading. It even works without code, so it integrates really well with Playmaker, Bolt, or Unity Visual Scripting. Using this asset instead of building your own safe system will certainly save you a ton of time. Also, pretty much every game will have pathfinding. 
you have the built-in Unity Nav Mesh, which is very good for what it is. But if your game has more intense or unique pathfinding needs, then check out the A-Star Pathfinding project. Almost every one of my Steam games uses this asset. When you enable multi-threading, it's insanely fast, it's pretty much free. Even in my game, Hyper Knights, where I could have over 1000 units on screen, even in that one, the pathfinding was still insanely fast. Also did a detailed review on this one if you want to learn more. And yet another great one that I've also reviewed is Quantum Console. It's a super easy way to add a console to your game. With just one attribute, you can call functions from your in-game console. This can massively help you speed up testing. For example, you're making a first-person shooter game and you're testing something, then suddenly you run out of ammo, well, you can just make a command to set the ammo and that's it. So there's no need for custom debug code or some special keys to trigger debug commands. You just use this asset, open up the console and type the commands. Now I'm probably biased about this next one, but you can use my own free health system instead of building one from scratch. It's what I've used in every single video on this channel where I needed some health and it's used in pretty much all of my Steam games. It's basic and does exactly what you expect. It stores health, has a bunch of functions to interact with it and some events keeping the whole thing nice and clean. So there are a ton of systems and tools that can really have a massive effect on your efficiency. There's no need to build everything from scratch yourself. And for the final category, we have Polish. As you might have heard me say, Polish is what separates good games from great games. Adding that tiny bit of Polish makes a massive difference. So if you want your game to be as great as it can be, then there's a bunch of Polish tools to really help you do that. One of the main ones that is all about Polish is called Feel. Like the name implies, this one helps make your game feel awesome. You can very easily add all kinds of screen shake, add zooms, color changes, and so on. Adding some tiny animation or feedback to just about any player action will massively improve just how good your game feels. I made a full review video on this one. In that video, I also made a quick getting started tutorial and took a really basic scene from boring to awesome in just a few minutes using this asset, so it can definitely save you a ton of time. If instead you want to handle those animations yourself and you just want a simple tool to tween some values, then check out DoTween. It's very simple to take any value that you have, define some sort of target and interpolate in any way you want. You can use all kinds of curves to make the tweening exactly as you want it. Then if your game has shooting or any actions that shoot damage the environment, then check out Rayfire. This one is a really awesome tool. I love the results that this produces. It makes for some really gorgeous destruction. You have tons of control for how exactly you want the destruction to behave and many, many ways to tweak the performance. You can even get it working on mobile. I also made a full review on this one. I really enjoyed using it to massively polish a simple third person shooter to something that looks and feels really awesome. Then static text is usually pretty boring. So if your game has lots of text then check out the text animator, it massively improves the feeling of your game by adding all sorts of tiny animations to your text. You can make it shake, you can animate it, change color. You can also apply it to just certain letters or words. So if your character says something like I'm really angry, you can make just the word angry shake in a really intense manner. Again, another thing that will really make your game feel polished and professional, and with this asset you can add it to your game pretty easily. Then I should also mention my own asset, the Mouse Cursor System Pro. This one is a super easy way to add custom animated cursors to your game, so you can modify the default boring arrow cursor and replace it with something much more interesting. You can even make that cursor animated. It's a tiny thing, but it can really make your game stand out, and also help your players learn how your game works without needing a dedicated tutorial. For example, if you mouse over an enemy and the cursor turns to a red crosshair, then it's pretty intuitive that it means some kind of an attack. If you mouse over an object and the cursor changes to a hand, then it's pretty clear you can pick it up. So obviously I'm biased about my own asset, but it does exactly what you want in a super easy to use asset. Once again, Polish is what separates good games from great games and these tools can help you push your game to that level in a pretty short amount of time. Alright, so those are about 20 assets split into 6 categories that can really help you speed up development of your game. I'm sure that several of these can be super useful regardless of whatever genre you're currently working on. They're all linked in the description, so check them out. Alright, hope that's useful. Check out these videos to learn some more. Thanks to these awesome Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.